In the previous parts, I talked about the flow world of energies. In this presentation, I'm going to focus on the source world. And the source world is all about the code. And the code has to do with ciphers. The essence of everything can be expressed as a cipher. And in the flow world, these ciphers are brought alive by functions. These are the basic functions, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Adding equals earth, subtracting means air, water equals multiplying, and fire means dividing. These are the female, the positive signs. Earth, I uh, mean adding makes more, and also multiplying makes more. These are the negative signs, the, the male signs, the young signs, making it less. Yeah? By subtracting you make it less, by dividing you make it also less. So you can also see the meaning of yin and yang back in these four symbols. Let's look at the ciphers in relation to these numbers, uh, to these functions. This is the multiplication table of one. This is the division table of one. We don't learn it at school, but I think it's very important to learn it as well. When we look at the outcome, we see 1 times 1 is 1, and so what, until 9, it's very easy. It means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The rhythm here we see, clockwise, is the outcome of the multiplication table of 1. When we look at the outcome of the division table of 1, we see the same ordering. 1 divided by 1 is 1, 2 divided by 2, so it's very easy. Yeah, it's basic, but just understand the, the rhythm. And it's the same rhythm, 1, 2, 3, clockwise going round. If we look at 8, it's the opposite. 1 times 8 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16, but we add up the 1 and the 6, then we get 7. 3 times 8 is 24, we add up the 2 and the 4, we get 6, and so on. This is 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 9. So it's this, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 9. It's going like this, counterclockwise. And when we look at the division table of 8, we see the same numbers again. 8, 7, 6, and so forth. So it's the same <coughs> rhythm. And because this is the same as this, we say that 1 is a reciprocal, that's a special term, reciprocal of 1. And 8 is the reciprocal of 8. This is multiplication and dividing, but also adding and subtracting. Adding 1 is 1, then you go here. Adding 1, you go here. Adding 1, you go here. Or if you subtract 8, if you subtract 8 from, uh, from 1, you come here, all the way here. It's the same. Or if you subtract 8 from here, you go here. So it's the same ordering. If you add 1 or subtract 8, then you go clockwise. But if you add 8 or you subtract 1, then you go counterclockwise. Yeah? It's only 8 and 1 on this sheet. Now make it a little bit complicated, more complicated. We look at 2 and 5. This is the multiplication table of 2. And now we see the rhythm 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 2, 4, 6, 8. And it goes back. I'm going to start here. 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. See? Going again clockwise. Here have the multiplication table of 2, but we have to take the division table of 5 to get the same ordering. Here's the division, division table of 5. 2, and so on. So we start with 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And I go back to 2. I hope this is clear. So 2 and 5 are now reciprocals. They are somehow connected. And here we see 7 and 4, the same relation. But now it's going counterclockwise. Start with 7, then 5, 3, 1, 8, 6, 4, 2, 9, back to 7. 7, 4 reciprocals, 2 and 5 reciprocals. And of course the same happens with adding 2 or subtracting 7. Go clockwise or counterclockwise, adding 7 or subtracting 2. Now we have the same numbers, but it's other. Now we have the multiplication table of 4 and the division table of 7. And again, we see that they are reciprocals. Now the order is 8, 4, 8, 3, 7, 2, 6, 1, 5, 9. So it starts here. 1, 8, 
three, seven, two, six, one, five, nine, back to four. It is still, you could say, clockwise. The other one is going counterclockwise. This is again just the basics of arithmetic, but all going back to one cipher. The rhythm we see here is a very special rhythm because it's one, two, and then it goes on forever because this is an infinite series of ciphers repeating itself over and over again. And in that repetition, we find another rhythm because if we divide one by seven, we get zero points. You could say zero is the circle around it, zero point, and then one, four, two, eight, five, seven, and then we one, four, two, eight, five, seven. This series goes on until infinity. And if you divide two by seven, it's very simple, then you just start here. Get two, eight, five, seven, one, four, two, and it repeats itself over and over again. Maybe you know this part of the symbol because if you add what happens between three, six, and nine, you get the symbol for the enneagram, another very important symbol. Now let us look at the three numbers we have not discussed yet, three, six, and nine. Something happens when we look at the multiplication or division tables from three and six. This is the multiplication table of three, and the outcome is only three, six, and nine. No other number appears. Doesn't matter how far we go, only three, six, and nine. And the same happens when we divide by six, the same rhythm. That's why the most, and here we see the other. Only six threes and nines. And again, the same here. So this is a special group, three, six, and nine. Nine is the most special because it doesn't really matter what we do, we can multiply with nine or divide by nine or add nine or subtract nine, the outcome is always nine. So nine, you could say, is the queen of all ciphers. That's why six, three, and nine form a special group. And here we see them. This is a normal group, and this is a normal group, and this is a special group. Two and five are reciprocals, four and seven are reciprocals, and three and six are reciprocals. Eight is a reciprocal by itself, and one is a reciprocal by itself, and also for nine. These are three cipher groups, and they, yeah, they create together kind of dynamics. And it's very visible in this beautiful symbol. If you want to learn more about it, go to the website The Akba Kingdom, that's the website of Randy Powell, and Randy is continuing the work of Marco Rodin. And they call it vortex-based mathematics. And it's all present in this symbol. I'm going to explain it to you. I call this symbol the source code because it's revealing the code from the source world. Here again we see the symbol. What we see here is a doubling sequence. If you double one, you get two. If you double two, you get four. If you double eight, uh, four, you get eight. Then you get